What's up YouTube and welcome to another Infinite Painter tutorial where today we're going to go ahead and create a cherry blossom on a cliff design up in the clouds. Now as always there's links to everything you're going to need in the description down below where you can go ahead and grab the image of the palette where you can go ahead and then select all the colors from that. Everything else though is built into Infinite Painter. You'll be able to go ahead and follow along with a lot of the default brushes and we'll create this fantastic loose painting design. And I want you to remember that it is gonna be a loose painting design. We want that streakiness to it. We want that painting aesthetic to it. So don't stress over fine details, chuck the color in and have some fun with it. And before we get into today's design, if you wanna now support the work that I do here on the channel, you can now become a member of the channel. We get a loyalty badge beside your name that grows over time, the longer you are a supporter. You'll get early access to these tutorials and potentially I'm going to do some exclusives to come in the future. I'll leave a link to becoming a member in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy today's tutorial and let's get started. So today's canvas size, the width is going to be 1668 and the height is going to be 2388. And we're going to leave the background color as sort of white to start with, but we're going to go ahead and hit create and go through to our canvas. And the first thing we want to then go ahead and do is add in our palette. So as always, we go up to the three dots in the top right, we go to the option of import. And you're gonna to wanna to grab the image that I provided of today's palette, whether or not you saved it to your photos or your files, whichever one. Once you've selected your option, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and select, is it a layer or a reference? And we wanna go ahead and add it in as a reference. And that's gonna add in the palette image. There's lots of gray tiles on there, which are blank colors. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is for me with my equipment, I can simply tap. If you take a look at my color here, every time I tap on a color, it changes to that color. Now, if you don't have that with your equipment, go up to the three dots in the top right, go to the option of settings, and you're gonna to wanna to scroll down to the option of gestures. And if you change long press here to the eyedropper, so you tap on it and select the eyedropper, what you'll then be able to do is hold down with your finger. When you do, you get a little ring around your finger where you can select the correct color. Let's get started first of all by going to our background color. So we're going to go ahead and in our layers, so open up your layers and go to this dot here and change your background color. Grab the pipette tool here and then tap on this color here, the second column from the right, the bottom purple. So you get this color here. Now let's go ahead and start to work on the background. So we're going to go ahead and go to our colors and grab the third color on that top row up there. And we're going to go to our brush. Now you've got two options here. Pick which one you prefer the look of. We've got the Goucher brush and I'll show you the settings for that here. And the sides would wanna be fairly large, maxed out there. The other brush you can use is something that's a little bit more sort of textured than the Goucher brush. And we're gonna use the paint roller brush. I'm giving you the options just in case you've got different equipment and you struggle potentially with that. So I've got the paint roller brush, got a size of 230, and I've got opacity and flow set down to the sort of midpoints here. Now you could probably, to be honest, bring them down a little bit lower as well, about 36, 35. We wanna start off at the bottom. I'm gonna bring that up to around about sort of 260, 270 if I can. And starting at the bottom, we're gonna create a lovely little gradient and we want that paper sort of painting texture style to it. So don't worry if it's nice and streaky, we want that. Notice how that was all one brush stroke. Notice how the color has started to fade out because I run out of paint. So I'm going to start again at the bottom. I'm going to try and sort of blend that up. And don't worry if you don't sort of make it too high up. Keep it nice and light with the color like this. Then switch it to the fifth color on that top row, this color here. And go left to right and blend out this color here at the bottom, creating a nice little glow. And you can keep sort of stroking from left to right and really blend that out if you want. But you will get that streaky effect, which looks fantastic. We're then going to create a second layer. We're going to go to this color here the bottom right of the palette. And we're gonna, at the very top here, go left to right, blending this in and creating a dark gradient at the top of our design. And again, we want that painting texture and we want it to be nice and dark up there. And I'm gonna undo that one there. I'm gonna go again, because I think I just let go ever so slightly. I'm just gonna blend that in a little bit more. Now we've separated these layers because I'm probably gonna adjust them. This is a little bit too low, but we'll see based on the rest of our design. We're then gonna go ahead and pinch those two layers together, which will group them and re rename that group if you want to. You can tap on it here. You can go ahead and rename the group. So we can tap here, rename it, and we can just call it Sky and hit rename. Then we're gonna go up to our three dots because it's good practice and hit the option of save. So we always save as we go. We'll create a new layer. It will drop itself above the sky. And now we can go ahead and we can grab and some of the darker tones to create our rock. And that's gonna be this one here, the very bottom left of the palette. This one here, 
we're going to go to our brush. We're going to go ahead and change it yet again. We're going to use a different paintbrush this time. We're going to use the clay roller. And if we go ahead and we go to the settings, you'll see my settings here. Now, for the moment, we actually want to max these out a little bit. I think we could probably leave the flow where it was. So 100% opacity flow wants to be around about 60. We're going to bring the size down. We're going to bring that down probably to something a bit more comfortable, probably around about 100. Looks pretty good to me. And roughly in this sort of area here, you're going to create your cliff. So roughly in the sort of bottom right quarter of your design. So you can go ahead and start on the sort of outer edge up here first and kind of block that in. And you kind of want it to be a bit janky and a bit sort of bulky like this in a way and have a little bit of overhang potentially, you know, create some interesting sort of formation there. And then just going around the top, you just want to have a bit of a curve upwards, just a tiny one there. And then once you've created your land, you can go ahead and then just fill that in. And I want you to do it manually because I don't want you to use the fill tool because we want potentially little areas of paint residue that's going to look a little bit messy and it's going to give it a bit more character. So I'm just going to block that in a tiny bit more like so. And I've got my cliff edge. Again, I can adjust this as well later on. We're then going to go ahead and we're going to create a new layer. And we're going to keep the same color, same brush, but we're going to bring the brush size down. We're going to make it a lot, lot smaller. I've got it down to about 25 here. And we're going to start to work on the construction of our tree. Now, we want it kind of leaning outwards. We want it to kind of swoop like this and then have some sort of branches that make their way outwards like this. But you also want to try and sort of add in the balance of how the tree sort of stands up. So we're going to start roughly here in the sort of top right area. And I'm going to start creating sort of the main sort of S shape here that's going to sort of come down into here and then it's going to branch back out so the roots are going to connect back into the, the land here and you can just sort of expand on that slightly making it a little bit bigger and I want it to be quite thin towards the top so I'm just going to bring that expansion in a little bit and I'm just going to let that sort of bulk out a little bit over here on the right hand side now make sure you just connect these at the bottom so that you could use the fill tool if you wanted to or again I would recommend you just fill it in. If it gets a little bit of painting sort of style with the brush, I don't think that's a problem. It'll add in some more character. So now just take a look, make sure you've got some sort of lovely contorting, twisting kind of shape to start with. And then from there, we can rotate our canvas just a little bit and create a bit of an overhang over here. So somewhat from like this bottom area here, I'm gonna just create like a bit of an overhang and allow that branch to just really take away from the body and really, uh, no pun intended, but branch out away from our main area here. And I want that to just swoop down. I want this to still have that little bit of a curve to it. It's got to have a bit of character in there. So I want this to kind of swoop a tiny bit here, adding in some extra bumps and lumps. Trees are not going to be perfectly smooth. So you want to add in like little bumps and lumps. Can you give it some character, some sort of twisting woody branches? Now, once you've created these main ones here, Get back in here now and bring your brush size down to maybe around about 16. And then we can start to sort of create the rest of the structure here. So you can sort of create some twisting little areas here of your branches. And don't be afraid to go a little bit smaller should you need to. I'm going to create another one that's just going to sort of come out from here and then along over here. And I want lots of little wobbles and tremors in here because I want the branches to have that lovely natural sort of unevenness to them. I'm going to bring it down again. I'm going to bring it down to eight now and just create some more branches that are just making their way out. And with the smaller brush size, you can go ahead and sort of nicely sort of bulk it out as you wish, but you can create those lovely sort of finer branches off the end. And also these ones here, make sure you sort of taper them off a little bit, you know, make them a little bit thinner towards the end. So just raise that up into a bit of a point there. And can we then also create like a Another one that curls back on itself here. And we're just going to just have some fun creating whatever kind of little shape that you can come up with. Now that for me looks like it's a little bit too far away from one another. So can I go ahead now and maybe sort of connect that and break the gap a little bit by introducing some more branches. So like another one here. And then could we even introduce another one sort of running off of here too. So you kind of want to look for your negative space, which is your gaps. And then can you then introduce another branch just to sort of fill it out and flush it out nicely until you've got something looking like this and you want that variation look at the variation in all of the different sort of thicknesses there of our 
branches you know you've got some nice thin ones you've got some nice chunky ones and then you've got ones in the middle as well and they all add character it's like when we create stars in the sky you want to go ahead and create small medium and large and that's the same for branches as well so once you've got a lovely twisting tree you want it leaning over that cliff and you can see sort of that lean over a little bit and that looks fantastic we can now start to go ahead and add in some color and texture to both the rock and the tree so what we'll do is we'll create a new layer in front of our tree but before we do go up to your three dots and hit save of course we'll create a new layer we'll tap on it and we will clip it to the tree we're then going to want to go ahead and you can pick a texture brush of your choice you can use the clay roller and you, what we want to do is we want to sort of set that to maybe around about 24 we can bring the opacity and the flow down to around about sort of 40 and then we're going to go ahead and grab a nice color to add in some texture so i think we're going to go ahead and we're going to rock this color here the top of the fifth column there we're going to zoom in on our tree and we're clipped to it meaning the layer now can only show what is clip what it's clipped to which is the tree now let me just take a look at my brush that does look pretty good for size uh, sorry flow we're going to set the size a little bit bigger up to about 30 and the sun is coming from here so it's shooting upwards so imagine that this cliff is blocking here essentially if we were to draw a line like i've just done there you can see that only this area over here would get the sun everywhere over here wouldn't get any so use that to your advantage now of thinking okay how can i now just come down this edge of the tree and then think about where the sun stops where does it not land anymore on our branches so we're just randomly painting in some areas of color it does not need to be perfect and you can overlap them as well so you get these dual tones here so you can just add in some good color along the edge of the branches up towards the top as well don't forget the really small ones and it's nice and random it's nice and sort of i say random it's nice and loose is what i mean to say it's nice and loose with our painting style today we're not trying to sort of hyper detail anything we're just going to keep it nice and light and i'm just going to very very lightly just come down the trunk just the tiniest bit just to add in some separation between these and just just add in a little bit of color on that so with that done we're then also going to go ahead and we're going to grab this color here the middle of the first column we're going to go ahead and bring that brush size down a little bit more down to around about 19 now and we're going to go over the top of these edges again just sort of brightening them up adding in some much needed sort of additional sort of brighter edges on them so again we're looking where that sun's coming up it's going to hit the underside of some of these branches and we're doing this just in case some of the branches are visible through our sort of cherry blossom at the top here so i'm going to go over it a couple of times in some spaces to really brighten it up like under here as well we'll brighten that up add in a little bit of color on there too and that will give you some nice lovely glows on your nice tree we're also going to go ahead and go down to the cliff and work on that while we're here so we'll create a new layer in front of it and tap on it and clipping mask it we're going to go ahead and add in some color to that now you can use the dark tone here to get started with so we could grab this color here or you can jump straight to the top color i'm going to use the bottom color to start with i'm going to set the size to something fairly large what size is that that's going to be a bit too small i'm going to go up to about 101 there and i've got the opacity and flow still set to quite low we're going to zoom in on our cliffs here and we're just going to really lightly paint in some rocky works again i want this to be nice and loose do not overstress this so like a little bit on the edge of the cliff here i'm just going to tap here and drag down just so I can adjust my size down to about 80 there. And then I'm going to sort of come down here. I'm going to come down at different angles and overlap them and create avenues for the rock and just create like crisscrossing almost all the way down. And then maybe I can create some additional ledges in here and go up to meet that. That's all it needs to be. This kind of crisscrossing kind of layout, keeping things nice and simple. And we can go ahead and create a new layer above. It will clip itself automatically. Then grab the lighter tone at the top of the fifth column and add in some brighter tones on top of those areas that you think is applicable so again looking at where that sunlight's coming in and just dancing in some color and then maybe the tiniest bit up on that top edge if i can nicely just get it to rest on there potentially so just really nice and loose using the painting strokes and you can go ahead and just introduce further ones in here if you wish it's totally up to you how you want to sort of flush out your rock work and add in you know more of it but i always believe less is more where necessary and then I'm going to create another new layer. I'm going to go to my colors and grab the middle of the first column again. I'm going to bring the brush size down. Let's go ahead and bring that down to around about sort of 60. And just down that left edge again, 
looking at where you've added in your stonework already, can you go ahead and just add in some bright patches on the brightest spots of your line work that you created here? So that will just help you just brighten up the stone. You don't need to add it everywhere. I'm going to undo that one that sat a little bit too high there. And now we've got some nice painted strokes in there for our stone. Now it's up to you. You can go ahead and tap on these and start to merge them down one after the other. So hit merge, tap on it, merge, tap on it and merge. And then that way you can save on your layers. I'm going to leave mine as is because I'm happy with the layer count that I've got available. Let's go ahead now and work on the cherry blossom. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to bring out my layers first of all. I'm going to pinch my cliff together so I can put that into a group. I'm going to tap on it. I'm going to rename it and I'll call it cliff. It's always good to just keep your layers nice and organized if you can. So we'll hit rename. So we've got cliff. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to tap at the very top, create a new layer, tap on it and turn off the clipping mask if it clips itself and drag it underneath our tree here. We're then going to go to our brush. We're going to go into watercolor and we're going to use this salt blossom brush here. So it should be quite nice just to create some really nice loose sort of petals at the very top here. So we're going to go ahead and start off with a nice dark tone to start with, which is actually going to be this color here, the middle of the fourth column here. My opacity and flow is set to max and my brush is set to around about sort of 111 there and we'll set the blend mode to normal. So we're going to go ahead and just behind here, just add in some circular shapes for your cherry blossom. So you want to create circular patches and circular patches and remember sort of where you've sort of dashed them in. Now, I urge you to create the circular patches like I've just done here. Take a look at your overall shape. See if you need to sort of round it out a little bit more, you know, create like a more rounded shape up here and try and maybe bring that a little bit higher. But I urge you to then tap a few times in certain spaces just to add in the odd little dash and the odd small amount of petal wrap like around the edges. If you drag this brush, it will really blob it in. And we don't really want that too much. I'm going to bring a few more of those a little bit wider. And this is behind our cherry blossom. So this is like behind. These are the leaves that are on the opposite side. So we're just adding in like a little bit of background color almost. And then what we'll do is we'll tap on this layer. We'll go ahead and lock it so we can't paint outside of what we've already painted on that layer. If we then go ahead and grab the color in the top left of the palette, we just want to very lightly in the sort of left areas add in some lighter tone. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to bring the opacity down and the flow again down to that 50% range. So I'm in control of it a little bit more. I'm going to lightly just sort of dance my pen around those circular blobs but that I created, but more so towards the bottom left edge of them. So I'm just dancing it in these areas again this is background content we're not really going to probably see this but it's just there in case it's visible again remembering where that light's coming up and here in our cherry blossom so just a little bit of background color in case again it is visible in the background now before we move on to the top area here we're going to go ahead and tap on it and just bring the opacity down of it until we can barely see it so about 25 percent because we need to be able to see the colors that we're going to introduce and a lot of them are going to be the same to start with so we're going to go right to the top of our layers and create a new layer. Tap on it and turn off the clip if it does clip itself automatically. We're going to grab the middle of the fourth column. We're going to grab our brush still and just drop the opacity and flow. Or in fact, sorry, bring them back up to maximum. And the brush size is still 111. And taking a look at the outline of what you previously created. Now what you can do is you can draw in those cherry blossoms again. And I urge you just to tap and drag just a little bit. Don't draw like large blobs, otherwise this brush will really overdo it. We're adding the petals that we can see at the top here in front of our tree. So now what you can do is you can start to sort of drag over the top of a lot of your branches and we can now start to disguise them and blend them in a little bit as well, which is gonna look fantastic. Bring some of the color down a little bit over the top of the trunk and the odd little speck that comes a little bit low is also fine. The little bit that runs over the edge here and a little bit that comes a little bit lower down. Just so you've got some nice variation in the shape, but ultimately you want that nice rounded look at the top, those rounded kind of cloud-like shapes at the top. And then that gives you a really, really good sort of shape for you to then start to build on top of. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna tap on that layer. We're gonna go ahead and lock it just like we did before, but we're gonna introduce like slightly more brighter tones in this. So we're gonna run straight to the third color on that top row. And you want to go ahead and look for your little circular clusters. So like I know I've created like a circular shape here, a circular shape here, and a circular shape here, and another one sort of back there. 
what do I need to do? Well, I need to look at those circular shapes and I need to add color essentially to the bottom left edge of all of them. That way we can then add in the color and show the lighting and how it's sitting on the petals. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and sort of dance in all of this color. And again, the left side's gonna end up being the most colorful. So you can really cover the majority of this left area. I'm gonna add in some good color in here. And then over here on the right, you wanna be a little bit more sparing. You still want this color in here because we've got brighter colors to still add in, but you wanna be somewhat sparing, especially over towards the top of the tree. Let the top of the tree just nicely have a dark tone that sits right on this top edge. And that's the color that we previously added. So again, you can see I'm just really making sure that the left side here has got a good solid amount of color. We still want it to have that lovely warm tone to it, but you've got the blues coming through as the shadows. Then we'll move to the next color, the second color on that top row. And then we'll dance this around those circular clusters again. So I'm looking for the left side of all of those circular clusters that I created and adding in some color on those where I can see those edges and I'm not going as far as the previous color. So what I mean by that is, take a look at this one. We've got the blue into the red and then into the light tone. Notice how they're separated. They're almost like stripes. You've got the blue, red and pink here as well, pink red, little bit of blue because this left side is a lot more colorful than the right side. But over here on the right, you've got the blue into the red with a teeny tiny bit of the light pink. We don't wanna add in too much of it because it's in the shadows. So I'm just making sure now I'm adding in this bright tone, especially all on all of the edges over here on that left hand side, just making sure that the edge of the sort of cherry blossoms we created are nice and colorful. Then we're gonna grab the top left color in the palette so it's even brighter, a little bit more white on this one. And then again, you wanna dance it on that left-hand side of all your little clusters. Try not to lose too much of your red, but you can see I'm keeping it more towards the left side of my entire cherry blossom and not stretching it too far across the design. Now at this point, you can then go ahead and go down to your layer that you put in the background behind our tree. You can tap on it and bring the opacity up of that to a level that you're happy with. Now, I quite like that it gets nice and dark, essentially. So I'm gonna bring mine up to around about 85%. I get a nice dark sort of silhouette really on the right-hand side, and then this left side is nice and colorful, showing where that lighting's coming up and across. So now we've done that, we can then go ahead and we can add in some small details for it. So we'll go ahead and create a new layer at the very top. Let's hit our three dots and save though, of course. We're gonna go ahead and go to our brush and we're gonna go back into paint and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the paint roller. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down to paint roller. I'm gonna make sure my color is set to the middle of the uh, first column there. And my opacity and flow is set to something quite low, but we also wanna make sure the brush is set to something nice and low. We want it set to something really small because we're gonna draw in some little petals. So let's try 3.6 to start with. And what I wanna do is I wanna just create like little drags of color here of a few petals falling. So with the opacity being quite low, let's make the brush size a little bit bigger. Let's go up to around about sort of maybe six to seven. Every time I drag, I'm creating a really light dash of a petal. But if I drag over it and then drag over it again, look at the brightness difference between the two and I can go over it again because we've got the opacity nice and low. We've got the option and the, uh, you know, we've given ourselves multiple options to add in petals that are falling, following the wind, maybe they're falling this way over towards the right hand side, at different sort of levels of visibility. So you can drag down a few really, really small ones in here and just drag them off towards this right hand side as if they're just falling down from the tree. It's right in the wind potentially. Add some on top of your tree as well, just to give it some more detail and just a few. And then don't forget to just bring your brush down as well. Maybe bring it down towards that four, four marker in here so you can create some smaller ones in there like little dots and little tiny little drags but just keep it sort of varied you don't want it all being the same size that way you get more variety and you've got these lovely falling cherry blossoms let's then go ahead and add in some clouds to our background so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and in front of our cliff group here you've got the cliff group we're going to create a new layer and drag it just down in front of it so we'll drag it down here in front of our cliff we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add in some clouds and they're gonna to wanna to be either this color here or this color here. I think we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab the color here in the top left of the palette. We're gonna to go to our brush and you can pick what you want for this. What we need to do is we need to get a brush size. It's probably gonna be around about sort of 
60 to 100 and we're going to just create rounded fluffy shapes like this now i really really love the texture of the paint roller that i'm using here under paint feel free to use something like the goucher brush in this uh, selection of paint brushes as well that'll be really good for the clouds as well because it will give you this kind of more fluffy look to them but you want to just make it a bit smaller than that that one looks a little bit too big you want to bring that down and you can create these lovely fluffy shapes that nicely layer on top of each other as well so pick whatever brush you like the aesthetic of and um, because i've just used it let's just use the uh, goucher brush let's set it to 200 we want the opacity to, to be nice and low and potentially the flow could even be dropped down to about 60 as well the size i've got it set to 200 to start with we're going to create some clouds in the distance and all you want to do again this is meant to be a loose painting style just create curly wobbly shapes layer your pen on top of itself as well so like layer it so you can create all this volume in the clouds and allow that to get right up to the edge of your cloud work there or your land and your cliff and then at the back just try and sort of drag out a few really really light ones i would even bring the opacity even lower than that maybe down to about sort of 10 and create some really faint cloud lines in the distance so like some wobbly fluffy lines that just run their way into the distance but fade out gradually as they get further away and then let's go ahead and bring that back up let's bring that back up to about that 45 percent let's start to think about increasing the size because it's getting closer to us i'm about 260 now with the size i'm going to just create some fluffy clouds in here you don't need to fill in every single gap of the space you know create gaps but as you get closer down here we're going to consume the cliff here so i'm going to bring the brush size up even more now to up to about sort of 300 i'm going to wobble my pen over the top here and create the clouds that are going to sort of consume the bottom of the cliff here and I'm going to go over the top. You can go over the top of the ones that are in behind. That's fine. You know, creating these round fluffy shapes in here. Fluffy, fluffy clouds. You can go backwards with the larger size. As long as you consume this sort of bottom area here. And what I mean by that is you kind of lose the cliff down here. So if I now bring that brush size down to like 160, I can create some fine areas of cloud here. And then maybe I could just build this up and build this up in this area and really just leave the cliff just pointing up and out of our um, clouds here and then with your clouds just try and create some sort of random light patches by just going over the top of a few of them a couple of times nothing too detailed further back but these ones here at the front you can just tap on say the top left hand side of a of a little blob of cloud that you've created and just really sort of brighten up one side this is a perfect example and you just want to nicely just have that lovely fluffy cloudy effect at the bottom we're going to go ahead and add in some lighting let's go up to our three dots before we do and hit save of course and what we'll do is we can go ahead and we can pinch all of the layers here that we've got for our tree together we can pinch all of them into a group and we can tap on the group and rename it and we can just call this tree hit rename then we're going to go ahead and create a new layer that's going to sit the very top of our design we're going to go to this color here the top of the fifth column and your brush wants to be set to the option of sprayers and we're going to use the soft airbrush we are going to really crank out the size of this it's maxed out in size you can see the size of it so i've maxed out the size i've got the opacity set to about 90 though i think that could probably be a little bit lower and what we're going to do is i'm just going to rotate my canvas because down here in the bottom right i'm going to go around in a circular motion and create a light gradient of color in this bottom right area of the design blend that up and out of this corner now you may struggle with this you may need to do it a couple of times you know go around in a circle keep going and then lightly sort of blend that out and then you can go over the top of it a few times in this corner down here brightening up this corner of the design if you struggle with this or you don't have pressure sensitivity etc etc you can go ahead and bring the opacity down and the flow just find a balance that works for the equipment that you've got and then you can build up the color in this bottom left area here let's go ahead and create a second layer let's go up to our three dots here and go to the option of edit let's go to filters and we're going to go to here and grab a lens flare we're going to tap on that and we're going to drag this flare off to the left hand side of our design down here and then you can scale this up and down now we don't need anything massive I think we can get away with 29% and drag this sort of off to the right hand side of our design, slightly off of the design. Now you can see it doesn't make a huge difference to it, but we're going to go ahead and just adjust the blend mode in a moment. But we'll push this just down here in the bottom left, just slightly off of our design, but enough that you get a few of those rays making their way up. So I've gone to 29%, 29%, 29%, 29%, 29%, 29%, 29%, 29%, 29%, 29%, 29%, 29%, 29%, 29%, 29%, 29%, 29%, 29%, 
and I'll hit the tick when I'm done. And we just end up with a nice glow and turn it on and off just to see the difference. Now you can tap on this layer, you can tap on its blend mode and we can try a different blend mode such as overlay which will just give us a nicer glow in this area here and not add it too much to the darker tone. So we keep that contrast. Now we've got that all in play. Now the only thing I wanna go ahead and do is I wanna take a look at my sky and where I created the gradient that sits in the background, I can go ahead and go to my tools up here. If I go to edit and I go to transform and distort, I can now grab the top node here and drag that out and create like a higher amount of glow or I can bring the glow down. So this is just those painting streaks that we created in the background. I'm gonna drag it up to around about here and hit the tick when I'm done, just to drag out the color a little bit higher. And if we go ahead, let's shrink our palette down so it's nice and nice and small. We'll swipe our layers out of the way. We'll pinch with two fingers. We'll go full screen with four and we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed this cherry blossom up in the clouds design. As always, make sure to tag me in your finished creations over on Instagram. You can tag me in them and I might even share them to my story. As always, you can also come and join me over on Facebook as well. Links to all my socials will be in the description down below. But I do have a Facebook group if you want to come and join that as well and come and share your work. And if you want to support the work that I do here on the channel, you can now become a member of the channel. There's a link to that in the description down below where you can support the work that I do here. You'll get a loyalty badge beside your name that grows over time the longer you are a supporter. And you also get early access to my YouTube tutorials with potentially some exclusives to come in the future. So with all that said, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.